Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the update or, or analysis of the Ukrainian offensive. So the Ukrainian offensive uh, has really go into some kind of a flow. Uh, it's still not at the climax or the peak of what the Ukrainians could do, uh, but we are seeing a taste of what uh, they could be doing. And uh, let's start off with uh, the most uh significant i guess would actually be um at the zaporizhia region so the ukrainians has been massing a massive number of troops uh over at the zaporizhia region and uh, they are gathering their forces uh around uh the mikilski shabaki region around the orikiv region uh around huyaipo region and uh they have more forces uh in the rear uh, that could actually come out, uh, come out and uh, reinforce them. And there's another force that is uh, quite big as well around the uh, Velika Novosilka region. And all of them have the potential to launch an offensive. And most likely they will all start at the same time uh, with fighting towards uh, Polohi, uh, down towards uh, Robotine, towards uh, Vasilivka. Shibaki probably they can even go down to Nesterianka or they can help out over at the uh, Shiroke and uh over at the Velika Novosilka region they will actually push south push south uh take over Novopil and uh retake all this chain of towns south of Velika Novosilka along the river and uh they will have reserve forces that will con will actually push down and uh, continue to help out uh to control the captured regions and uh, to provide a uh, securing of the front line and uh the russian forces are reacting uh they they have announced a massive uh civilian evacuation all the all this area here is now considered as war zone for for the russians despite the ukrainians have not even launched the attack and uh as you can see, even in the, around the uh, Unahoda region where the Zaporizhian nuclear power plant is, which means they believe that the Ukrainians will actually uh, attack towards that direction, probably probably from Kayamske, along with a crossing from uh, from the Zaporiz, uh, Dnipro region, from the Kers Kherson region, and uh, all this would means that the Russian forces may not be able to handle uh, if the Ukrainians time the attack properly so they are put, making preparations uh despite they have uh, multiple lines of defense uh the russians already have a uh, one line of defense second line of defense third line fourth line all the way to Maritopo. so all these lines of defense with all these lines of defense uh they are still feeling uh insecure it seems and uh so the ukrainians will have the potential uh to capture uh capture Tokma uh towards Enohoda with the crossings to ensure that uh, there is some, some kind of pincer happening and uh they can secure the roads and go towards a uh, Melitopo and uh with Tokma they can also go towards Berdians uh Berdians, and uh they can capture Polohi and uh through south to Berdians as well and uh through this road they can go towards Mariopo and of course, from Velika Nivus Silka, they can actually go to the rear as well while they are pushing out from Voleda. And with this, and as they captured the uh, Volovaka, they can actually also push the south towards Mariupol. And this is actually a pretty good plan. Uh, it will take a lot of concerted effort, defensive effort, to make sure that this does not happen uh of course this is equally difficult uh for the ukrainian side because they will have to do pu do this push powerful enough to punch through the russian lines and uh to route the first and second line of the russian defenses in order to even achieve half of this so of course these arrows are you know very easy to draw but we are talking about 70 to 80 kilometers to the back of the front line and uh, that is a lot of distance despite you know driving a car in a straight line that will only take at uh take one hour but uh in terms of a war zone uh it takes a long long time 
So uh, Zaporizhia is uh, definitely you know, very close to the actual uh, confrontation uh, with the Russians already uh, making their moves uh, to to prepare for it. So this is definitely you know, up and coming. Um, the the Rus the Ukrainian forces also have gathered forces around uh, Transnistria. There's there's a a huge force. Uh, there's not huge, but you know thousands of soldiers of forces, uh, in the north, uh, northwest part of uh, Odessa, as well as in the area of Kobasna, and uh, if the command are given, they will push in into Transnistria. The where and then they also push from the Odessa region into Telaspol to capture Telaspol, capture Kobasna. What is a Kobasna is actually uh, potentially a lot of Soviet uh, era uh, ammunition, shells and everything that the Ukrainians could use. Uh, the pro-Russian side like to say that uh, the all these warehouses has been emptied, uh, but there's no proof that that could have happened. So no idea what what is still inside the warehouses. So the Ukrainians were definitely curious to try. And Transnistria is very weakly defended. The, there's not much Russian troops there. And uh, Transnistria themselves is having a lot of brain drain. They don't need, I don't think they can feel a uh, strong enough military to actually resist a Ukrainian offensive. Not when the Ukrainians even have leopard tanks and uh, all these Challenger tanks. So it will be an easy win for the Ukrainians should that happen. I think NATO will, will will be keen to prevent them from doing that because that will mean you no know, enter into a kind some kind of war, war or you no know, potential confrontation into uh, with Moldova because Moldova is in this a uh, very not here not there situation where they don't want the Ukrainians to come into Transnistria because they see Transnistria as part of their land but they are also keen to join NATO and it really depends on how NATO might. You know give permission to the ukrainians so but there is this forces that is around here uh there is leopard tanks spotted in odessa as well so um the ukrainians are not entirely fully prepared it seems there are still tanks being transported so or who knows maybe the leopard tanks are part of the reserve force so it can take a bit more time to reach the front lines and um over at the donets front uh the ukrainians have launched offensive actions uh over at Voleda, they have attacked uh, Pelivka, uh, the the Dacha of Mikhilsky. They attacked from the northwest, no, north, northeast and the northwest of Mikhilsky. So this is actually to, to create a, a safe zone or a buffer zone around uh, Voleda. So this is what the Ukrainians are currently operating. Uh, no breakthrough yet, but they have been fighting uh, in this area for two days already. And uh, there is some probing at... Um, uh, Novo Mihailivka and uh, the, the Ukrainians also did try to counter-attack at Marinka. Uh, that did not work out. Uh, the Russians are still in the initiative at the Marinka region. Uh, there's there's no... Uh, the, the entire offensive uh, the Ukrainians tried on Vodian has been uh, given up, which means that the reinforcement that have come to Tonenke and uh, Jevene, uh is mainly for defensive purposes, at least for now. At, at least for now. So... Uh, there is no offensive around the New York region. Uh, in terms of the Bakhmut region, the Ukrainians currently, their offensive operation is largely around Khrykhorivka region, uh, Bodanivka. Uh, they are trying to push back the Russian forces uh, at Kromove. Uh, that is one of the main objectives currently. Uh, they are holding the line around uh, Ivanivsky and they are sending reinforcement whatever they can into Bakhmut. So let me redraw the arrow. The arrow, the arrow is so ugly. Yeah, and uh, try to hold the line at Bakhmut. Uh, so far, it seems to be quite successful. The 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 Russian forces have not been able to uh, take more territory around uh, around Bakhmut city. The Ukrainian uh, reinforcement has worked out. Uh, that they, and it seems like the rationing of the shells and ammunition uh, at the Bakhmut front had been lifted. Which is why the Ukrainians are able to send a uh, reinforcement uh, into Bakhmut city to continue to hold the lines, and uh, they managed to also prevent uh, these uh, Russian forces trying to cut off the Ukrainian into half. This has been uh, 
has been denied as well. The Ukrainians managed to you know, continue to fight the Russian forces and hold the line at this moment. Uh, Prigozhin claims that the Ukrainians are suffering heavy losses uh, trying to do this. Uh, but uh, usually, you know, as I always say, you no, know, I don't trust uh, claims about kills and casualties. So, yeah, just for your reference, I I think, of course, uh, the Ukrainians are going to take heavy losses because this is one of the heaviest fighting. But this goes the same for the Russian side. So, uh, the, so the Bakhmut... Uh, Offensive is definitely still ongoing. Uh, there is the Ukrainians are not launching an uh, offensive over at the Crimea or the Sivas region. The, the only other place is the continue uh, probing along the Kupians and Svetovay front, and uh, there is probing actions uh, over at uh, Timkovka, Kaislivka, Berestove, and Stemakivka. The one at uh, Sinkivka is not probing what i from the the consistent uh, basis of how the the fighting is ongoing this is actually an offensive operation with the ukrainians are uh, trying to uh, attack and expand the area a uh, defensive area around sinkivka particularly i think they want to capture liman Pershi, and this will actually set them up you no know, control the forest and then give them a good uh stepping stone or springboard for them to actually launch an attack against Vilshana and capture Vilshana. However, the Russians have a strong uh, strong position around Liman Pershi and around the forest line here and of course along uh, uh, Vilshana. So this is uh, definitely not an uh, easy thing for the Ukrainians to actually just do. Uh, the Ukrainians currently also has been reported by the pro-Russian sources to be preparing uh, boats to cross the Oskil River and this could actually corroborate, corroborate uh, my claims uh, based on the shelling reports that uh, there is some force at Kayamka as well as uh, at uh, Novolins where the Ukrainians could be actually do preparing to do the crossing. So there is some force around here and uh, some force around here and now uh, this force could potentially cross over and this could actually be done on both sides and create some kind of pincer. This is also possible and uh, all these forces come in to block the Russians from coming in uh, so the Russians will reinforce right from Russia their their job is to block this and the, this is actually the main force that will actually push the Russians backwards out of this region here that could also be possible with the forces at Kayanka trying to block off the Russian reinforcement so this is another one of these uh, more exciting uh, front lines that I will definitely uh, put my uh, attention on so anyway, this is the update. Uh, oh, I should also talk about the drones. The Ukrainians have launched a drone, uh, a lot of drone strikes and artillery strikes into Russia itself. And one of these, like as, as usual, you know, they do hit oil refineries and everything, you know, but I don't report on missile strikes. So, you know, because it happens all the time, but uh, I do attack, uh, report on air, uh, attacks on air bases. And uh, there is drone strikes reported at the Chesha airbase in Bryansk. So this circular uh, airbase has been hit by drone attack. Uh, however, the damage is not uh, not very significant. Uh, according to pro-Russian sources, they say that only one transport plane has received some ma minor damage. Uh, however, there was another one that is more famous that went viral is the attack on the Kremlin. Uh, Zelensky have denied responsibility for this drone attack. So, um, so this is the kind of like a gray zone kind of thing. Nobody knows what's happening. Of course, the Russians are going to blame the Ukrainians and uh, vow to uh, revenge on this uh, attempt at Putin's life. So the uh, the Ukrainians continue to do all these drone strikes. And um, I believe this is going to be uh, not, many, not very meaningful. The drone strikes are not very meaningful. I... Uh, just like what Zelensky has said, uh, his focus is actually on the fighting to retake their land within Ukraine. And I really think that that should be the focus. Uh, launching drone strikes into Russia, you, you're not going to do a lot. You, you're definitely going to make some inconvenience, but Russia is a huge place. So the best is actually focus on the front line. I think that would be much better because uh, attacking into the massive uh, 
region within Russia is you know it, you are just hoping for something that is very hard to quantify so anyway uh this is the update uh on the Ukrainian offensive and uh I'll see you in the next update